all of us probably interact with analytics and algorithms and artificial intelligence on a daily basis. Some examples of this could be through your Instagram feed, it predicting what you might want to see next while you're scrolling through it, potentially for hours. It might be predicting the next pair of boots that you want to buy based off of what you've bought before. Think about Amazon. Or it might come through the recommendation systems that Netflix uses in order to try to determine which, net, which uh, movie you're going to watch and binge for the next weekend. And so this is all fine and great and pretty um, amazing that they're able to do stuff like this with data. And it's also helping a lot in our medical fields and it has a lot of upsides. But I want to talk about how it has more serious implications in our society. What happens when we start using data and algorithms to determine whether or not you get a credit card or where your credit limit will be? Or even whether or not you're going to get approved for a loan? And what kind of information goes into that decision? Or even an example um, at Amazon when they were actually generating a resume tool in order to predict which candidates in the resume pool would be most successful in their company. This tool ended up through bias in the data, deprioritizing women and any person who had attended a women's college. And they ultimately had to completely scrap the tool altogether. And so these algorithms can be incorrect or correct in predicting. But what happens when they're correct? What do we do with them? If it's correctly predicting that someone's about to go back to jail, what do we do with that information? And I want to also talk about how big this problem is. There was a study done by PwC Money Tree that showed that $9.33 billion was invested in 2018 for AI startups. This is, the, this is a record number for them. And this was 10% of total venture capital that was invested that year. There was also a study done by KPMG that looked at the top global 500 companies. And 30 of them had said on average that they're currently spending $75 million on AI talent today. And all of them said that their investments are bound to increase in the next three years by 50 to 100 percent. So this is huge. And these companies know that these are competitive advantages for them, utilizing their data and building these algorithms. And so these leaders who are doing this are looking to their communities and experts and thought leaders to help guide their decision making on their strategy and technologies. And they're looking in places like the analytics community, people in their network. So I wanted to highlight this quote by machine, machine learning researcher Steve Ameriti who said, bias is not just in our data sets, it's in our conferences and community. We have a lack of diversity in places like the boardroom or the whiteboarding sessions that we're actually designing and implementing these algorithms in our research papers and who's writing them. And also in our conferences, who's up on stage sharing their ideas about these topics. There's another study done by Element AI that looked at the 21 leading AI conferences, and only 18% of those speakers and authors were women. The problem here is influence and the diversity of influence. The problem here is being seen, heard, and found. And I want to take you back to 2013 when I first got into the analytics field. I spent countless hours on weekends and weeknights watching endless YouTube videos on trying to figure out what a distributed system for data looked like. And I went out seeking for my own community. And I did find a community, but that community was rather non-diverse. And so I wanted to create a community to draw in people who had various backgrounds to share ideas around analytics and AI. So some of those people from that community actually helped me in launching our first ever Women in Analytics conference that was hosted here at Ohio State when I was a senior in college in 2016. And I quickly found that this community was not just for me, but it was for absolutely everybody that we were gathering together. I thought maybe only 30 people would show up, and we ended up having 120 people show up that day. And so I also want to start to talk about 
what is happening? Why is there a lack of diversity in these, in these communities? And what can we do to make this better? And so I wanna highlight the fact that just because you're really good at statistics and computer science doesn't mean you're a great public speaker and doesn't mean that you can communicate your ideas properly. So part of Women in Analytics, we wanted to not only create a platform for more diverse voices to get on the stage and talk about these topics, but we wanted to provide resources for them to be able to do it well. So we actually provide free speaker coaching for all of our speakers so that we can take people who are doing really interesting work and give them a, a space to be able to practice to communicate them. I also noticed that how do, how do speakers actually get selected to talk at these types of conferences? And we wanted to switch it up and make sure that we had diversity and that we were looking at people who didn't just have C-level titles and people who had spoken before because we're really limiting ourselves in the amount of diversity in those two categories. So fast forward about three years, and we're still running our annual Women in Analytics Conference in Columbus. This is a picture from our last conference in 2019, earlier this year. And we've doubled in size every year. Last year, we sold out at 750 people. Thank you. And this year, we'll go on to be one of the largest analytics conferences in the Midwest. We also studied all of our pre previous speakers to see what kind of an impact we are having on their careers. And we got some interesting results. 30% of our speakers had never spoken at a conference before. 88% of them said that that experience made them more confident as a speaker. 76% of them said that they are now more confident, confident publicly speaking about analytics. And 70% of them said that through this experience, they've met someone who has positively influenced their career in analytics. They said things like, I've accepted more speaking opportunities because I know I can get up on a stage and talk about these things. And one of them even went on to go and teach a, a class at a university. And by the end of 2020, we will have put 100 speakers on the stage who are all women and gender minorities. And so I just want all of you to imagine a world where those that are creating these algorithms and analytics and artificial intelligence represent those that are being affected by them. Thank you. <laughs>